Man Z, Bob Zolke, and today I am here with another one of my American League comparisons to the Chicago White Sox team. And we have an update on the Chicago White Sox team as well. So today we're going to do a comparison of the Chicago White Sox of 2020 to the Chicago to the Detroit Tigers of 2020 because as bad as the Tigers will be and they will be bad they are in our division and we do play them quite often every season and 2020 will be no exception to that so uh, if you watch the previous videos I did comparisons to the crosstown rival Chicago Cubs to the Kansas City Royals, who are also in our division, and to the um, Minnesota Twins, who are in our division and expected to be very good, and probably our stiffest competition for next year. But if you watched my other videos, you also know that I said we could use another bullpen piece, and guess what? They got one. The White Sox went out and they signed Steve Ciszek. And I also posted a video on that, and I will link to that at the end of the video if you care to go back and look at that video. Um, in short, he signed a one-year guaranteed contract with also a, a second year at a, a club option for the White Sox with an average annual value of $6 million a year. So, if the White Sox want him for two seasons, we'll have him for the next two seasons. Which sounds great to me, because he is an excellent relief pitcher. He was probably the best relief pitcher out on the market that was available. And then, of course, you add that to this bullpen, and one of these guys is probably not going to make the bullpen because of C-Sheck. Um, it could be Carson Fulmer, because... He's had a rough time so far in the major leagues. Um, well, yeah, I mean, uh, I, I would think it would be him. And then, of course, guys like Dylan Covey, there's no way. I mean, I don't see any way that a guy like Dylan Covey even has a chance of making the bullpen now. Um, so, uh, so that's where we are with the bullpen. And, of course... I've gone over a lot of this before, but the rotation, Giolito, Keuchel, Lopez, uh, Gonzalez, Dylan Cease. Um, I have Cease there because that seems to be the, uh, the going consensus is that Dylan Cease is going to be the, um, is going to be in the rotation. So that means Kopech is kind of, you know, up in the air question there about um, Kopech. They could put Kopech in the rotation and keep Cease there and maybe put Lopez in the bullpen. That's one of their options. Of course, a lot of this is going to be determined in spring training, as will actually the bullpen itself. So we'll have to wait and see. And of course, I've gone over this lineup before. This, These are the guys that the lineup is probably going to be comprised of. It doesn't mean that this is the order they'll bat in. But you've got Lewis Robert in center field, Tim Anderson at short, Moncada at third, Abreu at first base, Encarnacion at DH, Desmani Grandal at catcher, um, Eloy Jimenez in left, Nomar Mazzara in right, and then the uh, Mendic Mandrigal uh, combination at second, potentially. And. Um, Mendick would probably only be holding it down at the start of the season, potentially, while Mandrigal, well, they waited for Mandrigal's free agent clock not to kick in for this year. So he might be up in later in April or sometime in May or something, and then Mendick might be the second baseman until then, or even Lori Garcia might be at second base until then. A lot, of, a lot of this kinds of thing is going to be uh, determined in spring training for the uh, White Sox. But this is a very solid, very good team. Um, I mean, last year we won 72 games. you got to think that there's at least an 18 to 19 game improvement here 
with this roster. Which takes us to Detroit, and here's their projected lineup. You have Jacoby Jones in center, Nico Goodrum at short, uh, Miguel Cabrera at DH, the newly acquired CJ Crone at first base, Kristen Stewart at in right field, and Jonathan Scope at second, Yimer Candelario at third base, uh, Austin Romine at catcher, and Victor Reyes in left. Uh, the rotation that they would go with, it looks like, is going to be um, Matthew Boyd, uh, Jordan Zimmerman, Daniel Norris, um, Scott, I think it's Scott Turnbull, um, Tyler Alexander, and um, Fulmer. And Fulmer is coming off an injury-plagued season. In fact, he didn't pitch in 2019 at all. And in 2018, he was 4-12 with a 469 earned run average. Um, and, and he may not even be fully recovered yet. And then their bullpen is Joe Jimenez, Buck Farmer, Cisnero, Brian Garcia, Dave McKay, Matt Hall, and John Schreiber, it looks like. So, uh, you know, this lineup is not very good. Jacoby Jones hit 235 with 11 homers last year. Uh, Goodrum hit 248 with 12 homers. Cabrera hit 282 with an uncharacteristically low 12 home runs. He can probably do better unless he's on the slippery slope to oblivion in which case he won't. Um, C.J. Crone, who is probably going to be their best hitter this coming year, hit 253 with 25 homers. Um, Stewart hit 233 with 10. Scope hit 256 with 23 homers when he was with Minnesota last year. And uh, Candelario hit 203 with eight home runs. So and then Romine and Reyes. I don't know what they did, but it can't be that great. Um, so that's their that's the lineup you're looking at. And then you have Matthew Boyd, who was nine and twelve with a four fifty six earned run average. Um, Jordan Zimmerman, yeah. Jordan Zimmerman was one and thirteen with a six ninety one earned run average. And then you got Daniel Norris, who was actually um, not horrible. He was he, he had a three and thirteen record, but that's because of the team he was on. But he had a four forty nine earned run average. And then uh, you got Turnbull, who was three and seventeen with a four sixty one earned run average. And as I said, Fulmer did not pitch last year. So the bullpen is really just kind of more of the same. Joe Jimenez had a 437 earned run average. Buck Farmer was actually decent. He had a 372 earned run average, although that is kind of high for a relief pitcher. You don't like to see it that high for, for a, a reliever. Uh, Cisnero had a 433, and McKay had a 547. And, um, yeah, so there's that's where we are there. Their bench is uh, Harold Castro, Grayson Griner. I love that name, Grayson Griner. I, I wish the White Sox would go get him just because of the name. Um, then you got Will Castro and Brandon Dixon and Dowell Lugo on their bench. So that's a quick overview of the uh, Detroit Tigers. I think in a previous video, I... Um, said that they would probably that they could finish above Cleveland but now looking at this no there's no way I'm gonna have to reassess that and I will in future videos especially in the Cleveland video when I do that but there is no way this team is gonna be uh, better than Cleveland oh, and maybe not Kansas City although I have had some people comment and say that Kansas City is expected to be the worst team in baseball. But it's uh, 
I think it's going to be a close competition between uh, these guys and um, the uh, and the Kansas City uh, Royals. So we'll have to see. But this is uh, this is more good news though for the White Sox because now you've got Kansas City, who many think is absolutely terrible and will be the worst team in baseball, as I said, and then the Detroit Tigers who look like they could possibly be one of the worst teams, at least, in baseball. And then you got Cleveland, who's basically punting on 2020. Even though they haven't dealt Lindor yet, and may not, they still, I mean, they're, they're a shell of the team that they used to be. I'm not going to say that they're as bad as Kansas City or Detroit, because they probably aren't in reassessing it. But, you know, this is good news. Good news for Detroit. So what do you guys think? Um, do you think, uh, I mean, this really solidifies the fact that the White Sox are going to be the second, at least the second place team in the division. Um, possibly we can overtake the Twins, but it depends. Uh, you go back and watch the Twins video and you can see what I mean by that. Um, but um, this, the addition of C-Sheck definitely helps now. So I think we have a, a more solid bullpen, and I think we have, uh, I think we're ready. I mean, I don't know if the White Sox plan to do anything else, but I think even if they didn't, I would be satisfied with this. So let me know what you guys think in the comments. Um, don't forget to subscribe and um, uh, ring the bell so that you know when I have videos out, because during the season, I'm going to be doing a ton of White Sox videos. And... Um, and talking about the White Sox and updating how they're doing and all of that. And also share it with any other White Sox fans that you might know. Uh, obviously, if you're a White Sox fan you and you live, especially if you live in Chicago, you may know others, so pass it on to them. Tell them about the channel uh, and then let them look at the videos and decide for themselves. But for right now, it's me, Sportsman Z, Bob Zolke, signing off. trying to. Perhaps not.